Has anybody ever been in one of these? Yeah, I don't like it. It's oh, a, yeah. They call it a water walking boat. So you did do it? They make it look much cooler. I bet. Maybe it's just me, but I don't like making pictures. How do you seal? Yeah. But they're fun. How do you seal it so it doesn't get water? Yeah, it's a zipper. Just find a spot. Do your thing. I feel like it makes you feel like super cozy. Yeah. I don't yeah. like the feeling of walking on water. Like, I believe it just feels weird. Yeah, I bet. I've never done it, but it seems like it would feel weird as well. I feel like you're a little bit odd. Yeah, maybe when you're a kid. Well, the formula for area of a sphere, or excuse me, volume of a sphere, is given. It's a little bit hard to see, so. So when we read ball, we kind of think of a sphere. And in that formula, what do we know? Like what could we plug in that we know? Yeah, pi, true. <laughs> Which is what? You don't want me to recite. Oh, how many do you know? Like 75. Seriously? Cool. That probably would only take like, what, 40 seconds or so? You want to try it? No. I don't remember. Let's still. That was, that was probably what, like 30 probably? Something like that. Huh? Yeah, they're That's true. As long as you get through them four. And then everybody's like, after that, it's. Yeah. Good job. Alright, so we could plug in 3.14 for pi, that's true. What else? Guys, read the problem again. What else was given that we could plug into this formula? The volume, right? So basically, we're going to plug 4.19 in. Yes, we can put 3.14 for pi if you want. And then we need to solve for r cubed. So now that that's set up, go ahead and do that, please. We actually, I said we need to solve for r cubed, but really we want r, right? We want to get r by itself. So we need to get r by itself. In our notes, we talked about, and let me pull those up so we can just remind you where to look. This was under basic solving, so on mine, the top of page two. So it says, as usual, undo and balance to get x by itself, in this case, r. So specifically, we need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide to get the x to the n by itself. So how do we get rid of 4 thirds times pi? Well, we can multiply those together. And these calculators have pi uh, above the power key. So on the right, underneath clear. And then it just puts the symbol for you. So if we're looking at like 4.189. And then, how do we get r cubed by itself? Divide, by Divide good. And I want you to notice, if we had rounded that to one more, to the hundredths place, it's the same. Right? And so, basically, this is 1 equals r cubed. And then, cube root. Both sides, but... That just gives us r is 1 still. So cube root of 1 is 1. So this is, notice the units were meters cubed. So this is 1 meter in radius. Does that seem big enough to fit somebody? Yeah. Um, he has his arms outstretched. But if you think two of these. Yeah, maybe if I did it a little bit less, right? 
but it's reasonable. That's roughly how many that ball would be. And maybe that's like the interior diameter, not the exterior. But that seems reasonable. Why did I do two sticks instead of just one? Yeah, middle out is one. So middle out the other way, that would be two across. So the diameter is two. Cool. How many of you got one once you solved that? Do I have to set it up? Two of you? Um, I, I will say I do expect you to be able to do this. So if you struggled, you need to let me know how to help you. Because this is basic solving where we divide and then root. Okay. Yesterday we started writing exponent properties down. And starting our second section where I told you we were going to be doing adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing of the uh, various radicals that we have and, and also rational exponent expressions. So just giving you kind of a heads up, so I just want to show you what this will look like. So here's an example of some problems that you'll end up doing. Simplifying, these are all rational exponents, so simplifying rational exponent expressions. And then here's some more. Those are multiplication with some division. And let's see if I can find some, ra some radicals. Yeah, like something like these, okay? So simplifying a little bit more complicated than we did before. Um, point in showing you this. Uh, here's one other version. So multiplying, multiplying different things. And it'll get a little bit different than that. But point in showing you this is t so you know what we're headed towards. So you know what to write down and pay attention to. Okay, here's another type of multiplication and some of the ones that will multiply and these are all too easy so some of the ones will multiply will not have the same index so like these both have a fifth root some of them will have like a fifth and a fourth and what the heck do we do with that so um, just know that that's where we're headed in this section and why I said it will take us a few days to get through it, okay? And don't worry about it. You'll have all the tools you need when we get there. So we started with exponent properties. Before we finish those, I want you to look at these three questions. And to make it big enough, I have to cut off the last question. But basically, the question is always the same. Is Olivia's work correct? So there's the three different, uh, three different work sections that she did. So see what you think. You guys are telling me which you're correct that she did none of these correctly. Oh. Huh? They're all wrong. Yep. So point here being, do you see? Do you see it being possible that you could do the same thing? I guess is the question. Like, is it, could you see yourself making these same mistakes? Maybe. Uh, Maybe now, hard. but yeah. hopefully in a little while, not at all. What is wrong with this one? Basically, she did this, 20. She did 20 squared plus 4 squared. That's what those two numbers are. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. Okay, let's break it down a little further. She thought of it this way, I guess, 20 plus 4 maybe in parentheses squared. So is it okay to take a sum and then split it like that in uh, terms of an exponent? No, it must not be because 24 squared is not 416. So it must not be okay to split them up like that. So lesson one, if you have a sum or a difference inside of something being taken to an exponent, you may not split it up, okay? So think of it this way. 
Maybe that's easy to understand. What if it was this? How many of you would be tempted to say, oh, that's just x squared plus y squared? You should probably say yes, that you're tempted, because people have done this already this year. So now we know you can't. Don't do it that way, OK? So none of those options are good. So what do we do with 24 squared? Is there a way to make it to where it's OK? To, like, to break it up or simplify it down, is there a way to do that? No. What did you say? Well, like this one, yes. He said, he, this is what he said. This is the correct method, right? That's correct. And then he said distribute it. <clears throat> but if I said 24 squared, is there a way to think through that without doing it wrong? Maybe you're saying that for that as well. Yeah. Instead of doing it that way, we could do this, 20 plus 4 times 20 plus 4. That's OK. OK? So we get 400 plus 80 plus 80 plus 16. So what is that? 576, I think. OK? Yeah. Good. All right, how about this next one? What, what went wrong here? What do you think? Here's, I'll show you what she wrote out. At least what she thought she was doing was 3 squared times 3 cubed. So 3 squared is 9 times 3 cubed is 27. So why is that wrong? Yeah, those that add up, we add those, not multiply them. So those only add up to 3 to the fifth. So she's too low. How about this one? Well, she did kind of the same idea as this first one, where she said square root of 400 plus 225 inside is the same as splitting up those radicals. And again, you can't split up when we're adding. We can't split it into two. We can if we multiply, but not if we add. So that's also wrong. So guys, these exponent rules are really important to know. So you avoid these mistakes that sort of on the surface look fine, like look like it's OK to do, but not. So let's go right down the correct version. We started this list yesterday with the product and the quotient property. Why don't you take 30 seconds to review what those said? So when we're multiplying bases with exponents, we add the exponents. Uh, but notice it says same base. And that's probably, we probably need to emphasize that even more than we did there. Same thing is true about the quotient property. We have to have the same base. So x. Quotient though, we're subtracting the exponents, so m minus n versus n, m plus n, so subtract exponents when we divide. Everybody good? On those two. Okay, let's add another one. We've already seen this next one. So number three, the power property. Let's call it the power to a power property. So we've already used this to establish the connection between rational exponents and radicals. 
So power to a power x to the m to the n is x to the m times n. So in this, we multiply. Multiply those exponents. Notice there's only one base, so we don't need to worry about saying same base. Number four. Actually, I'm going to wait till you get that. Okay, this is the last one we're going to write because we already wrote about the negative one, the negative exponents. But this one is the power of a product. So this one looks like x, y to the m. Because the x and y are multiplied, it's OK to separate them out. If it said x plus y, nope, can't do it. Okay, Don't separate them in that case. So it's okay to separate x times y if they're multiplied. Uh, maybe add this. Just so you don't make that mistake that Olivia did in the, in the warm-up problem. Okay? You can't separate if it's added or subtracted inside, only if it's multiplied. Okay, so I showed you some of the problems that we're going to do with these, like fairly complicated looking fraction stuff. Um, so you, you really need to know these. If I was going to tell you to memorize something, it should be this. Not just this, but this for sure. Because if you're having to look back at this list every time you do one of these problems, the chances are you're going to make a mistake. So get it in your head. Take time over the next few days to memorize these four rules. Uh, also, we wrote about the negative exponent property. I think it was a few lines or maybe the previous page. I'll have to look. But. Take time to know these is the point. So pretty much from here on out, we'll be using these in some way or another. On out through the unit, I mean. Yeah, it looks like for me it's on the bottom of the first page. So, negative exponent. You also need to understand how to use that. Um, the division property, the quotient property, will kind of overtake this a little in some of our problems. It's okay. So, let's go look at one or some. There's all those. This is huge. All right, 81 to the 5 sixth times 81 to the negative 1 third. Go ahead and write these down with me so you have examples in your notebook. Don't put them on your pink sheet. So notice the, the prompt just says rewrite. We're not trying to solve it right at the moment. 
If we can at the end, sure, but right now we just want to rewrite this. So 81 to the 5 sixth times 81 to the negative 1 third. First of all, do we need to convert these to radicals? Or should we leave them like this? Yeah, we're going to leave them for sure. Okay, so what's, what's being done? Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Or power to a power? What's being done? Remember, power of a product would look like, I don't know, 81 times 10 to the fourth or something. And we could separate that. That's how the power of a product would look. So a product being done inside parentheses. Guys, what are we doing in between the two 81s? So which rule is it? It's the product property. What do we do with exponents in the product property? We add them, okay? So this is 81 to the 5 6 plus negative 1 third. Product property. Okay, well, how do we add 5 6 and negative 1 third? We need a common denominator of 6 and 3. So 81 to the 5 6 plus negative 2 6. So common denominator of 6 and 3 is 6. Okay, well that becomes 5 plus negative 2. So this now becomes 81 to the 3 6. Now what? Are we done? Yeah, we're, we have rewritten it, but now... 3 6 is 1 half, which is the same as the square root, which is positive or negative 9. That's where we need to get that one, all the way down to positive or negative 9. Okay? Okay, next one. Go ahead and write it down. Uh, in fact, let me write it a little bigger so you can see it. So this one we're going to have to combine properties because there's multiple things going on. Um, you could make an argument for using the power of a product because I see things multiplied in parentheses to a power. Uh, but I also see division, so the quotient property. I also see power to a power. So potentially three different exponent properties. Here's my advice. Do what's inside, like simplify what's inside as far as you can before you go doing the exponent on the outside. Okay? So I'm going to say simplify inside first. What would that look like? What can I simplify inside? So I'm going to write the x as x to the first, and that way we know we have an x to the first over an x to the one half. So all I did was add a one. In fact, that was, let me just put it on the original so I have room here. So x to the one over x to the half. Over implies division, so we're going to use the quotient property, which says subtract exponents, okay? So this becomes x to the 1 minus 1 half y cubed. 
So no longer, I don't need the division anymore because I accounted for that by moving the exponent into, like combining it with the, the one in the numerator. So just one minus one half. Guys, what's up today? I'm, I'm basically talking to three of you. The rest of you are in your own world, off and on. So, like, I won't hassle you, but just know that I'm teaching you this now, and so if you're missing it, I don't know, I'm not sure what you're going to do. Pay attention, ask questions. If something's up, let me know. Okay? Like, phones and R, like... <clears throat> We're here, we're ready to do the power to a power property. So we get one half times two thirds. And then y, I, I can either put a multiplication symbol there or not, it doesn't really matter, to the three times two thirds. Um, I'll leave it like that instead of putting a one. So one half came from one minus a half. 1 half to the 2 thirds, just multiply. 3 to the 2 thirds, just multiply. If you write out your fractions nice and neat, we can see that the 2's cancel, and this becomes x to the 1 third. And here the 3's cancel, and it becomes y squared. We don't need to, but we can put a multiplication sign there, but we don't need to do that. It's fine this way. So, if it helps you, you don't need to put the 1, but you can. So we did the quotient property to get 1 minus a half and get rid of our fraction. Did the subtraction and then did the product, or excuse me, the power property to multiply our exponents. Okay. Go ahead and try those two. All right, so this one, you have two options to start. You can try to do 32 to the 2 fifths. So you could you could do 3 over the fifth root of 32 squared. That's OK. So all I did was use our, our conversion from radicals to rationals or backwards, excuse me. I use that to rewrite it this way inside of this half. From here, you can do the fifth root of 32 squared, which is four. So this becomes three over two squared. So the half, three over two squared is just three fourths. Three over four to the one half. And then take each of those to the one half. So three to the one half over four to the one half. If, and I would probably prefer it this way, take the one half back to a radical. So it's root three over two, because the square root of four is two. Okay? When you're doing these kind of problems, you do not need to go put plus or minus. Because we're not solving, we're just going to worry about the principal root. Principal root here. So don't, don't worry about putting a one-half power. Or, I mean, a plus or minus. Did you put the key back? I put it right there. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was, that's one option, and it's a good one. The other option is we could have taken power to a power first. So we could have just gone power to power first. So 3 to the 1 half over 32 to the 2 fifths to the 1 half. Then power to a power says 3 to the 1 half. And multiply those two, 32 to the 2 fifths times 1 half, and the 2's cancel. And then we're just left with 3 to the 1 half over 32 to the 1 fifth. 
So same thing, root 3 over 2. 32 to the 1 -fifth is 2. So either way, um, how many of you connect better with this first method? Where you actually do the, the two fifths first and then do the power to a power. How many of you connect better with that way? Okay, this one. What should we do first? There's a lot, a lot that looks like you could do. What should we start with? Okay, so he went like parentheses. Number one, can I do this and use the product rule, product property? Why not? No, I'm saying like do this A times this A and do the product property. Is that okay? Well, yeah. Can I do that though first? No. Order of operation says deal with this exponent, right? You've got it. You can't break order of operations. So, if you're writing this, you should probably remind yourself of that. So we need to work in here first, and then deal with the 2a to the 1 third out front. So I'm just going to rewrite that right now, just leave it alone. I cannot combine a or b. So this is just a to the 2 thirds. Take a to the 2 thirds, so do the, pro the power to a power. b to the 1 half to the 2 thirds becomes b to the 1 half times 2 thirds. So power to a power. And then we also, because I split those up, which we don't have to do, that's power of a product. It allows me to split those. And then up here, power to a power. Okay. Now simplify what we have so far. So rewrite the first thing. A to the two-thirds, that's nothing to do there. B, those twos cancel, so this becomes B to the one-third when we cancel the twos. Okay, now what can I do with this A and this, this A to the one-third and that A to the two-thirds? How? Yeah, combine them. How? Uh, yep, this is product property. Because we're multiplying the a's, so we can combine the two exponents by addition. So 2, this becomes 2a to the 1 third plus 2 thirds, b to the 1 third. Again, I don't, I personally don't like having that separated out for this kind. But if it works for you, that's fine. All right, finally, one-third plus two-thirds is one. It's three-thirds or one. So this becomes 2a, just 2a, b to the one-third. And if you want, you can take it one step further to write it like that, 2a cube root of b. Those last two are equivalent. So... I guess it depends what you're doing next, if you want to leave it or not. What do you think? Do you see why I said you need to memorize these rules? Because you're just applying one after another in a problem, and if you have to go back and look and remind yourself 55 times, it's just going to mess up. Like, it probably will just crash. <clears throat> Um, I don't know what got cut off here, so let's don't worry about that. And try that one. That's another one with numbers. And we haven't, we can talk about that second one here in a second. So guys, I'm, I'm Xing this out, not because we're not going to do those, just not yet. I think we're going to practice these <coughs> quite a bit more.
So again, we can rewrite this denominator, just the denominator, as the sixth root of 64 to the fifth. <coughs> and all that to the half. So I handed you the yellow reference sheet yesterday. Look at the sixth root of 64. It's two. Okay. And then two to the fifth, you can kind of back. 32. Yeah. You can kind of back check that if you go to the fifth root, and you'll see underneath is the 32 um, for two to the fifth. So again, this is all doable without a calculator. So this just becomes 2, sorry, not 2, 32. 32 to the 1 half. Simplify that first to 1 over 8 to the 1 half. So 4 30 seconds is just 1 8. And now if you want, not if you want, but Let's write it out. 1 to the 1 half over 8 to the 1 half. <clears throat> well, 1 square rooted is just 1. And we could write it like that. However, two things. Number 1, do you guys remember when we did simplifying radicals? with just square roots where we broke, let's say we had 50, we broke it up into square root of 25 times square root of 2. We picked 25 because it's square rootable. So this became 5 times root 2 simplified. You remember doing that at all? We can do that with 8. 8 is not a perfect square. But we can split it up into the square root of 4 times square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So we can write it as 1 over 2 root 2. However, when we get to simplifying radicals, we cannot have a radical in the denominator. Like this. It's, that's not simplified. So to undo that or to get rid of it, just multiply by it. So we're just, it's like scaling up a fraction where you multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. <clears throat> multiply both top and bottom by that same radical. So 1 times root 2 is root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So this just becomes 4. So 2 times 2, so 4. So that should be our final answer, root 2 over 4. If you got it to here for now, that's okay. But just know that you need to keep going. Simplify your radical. Get rid of it, the radical in the denominator to get to that point. Do you follow that or do you have questions about that step? Okay. All right. Let's practice this. Uh, open, open stacks 8.3. So if you look on Google Classroom at the bottom of the classwork page, there's the link to OpenStax, to the, well, to the book that we use at least. And then from there, table of contents, and this stuff is specifically in 8.3. Remember, there's a bunch of examples and stuff in there before the problems start. Feel free to look through those. If you get stuck, feel free to look at an example. But you'll need to scroll all the way down, and you're going to start your work on 151. There's some examples of the harder kind in there, too. Uh, but 151 through 161, odd. So that section, 151 to 161 odd. And I have some of them posted here. Oh, that was like 
Okay. If you have